The Russian Revolution is a political, social and economic movement that broke out in 1917 in the Russian Empire. This episode is considered to be one of the greatest events of the contemporary era due to the transcendental consequences derived from it. The consequence was the collapse of the Tsar's dynasty, heirs of the Roman emperors, which meant the abolition of the absolutist and despotic system that prevailed until then. The revolution resulted in a communist-led government led by Vladimir Lenin. The causes that motivated the Russian Revolution were the first cause, Russia was at war with Germany. It was the First World War, what was then called the Great War. The constant defeats suffered by the Russian armies in the war and the many casualties led to discredit the Romanov, the last Tsarist dynasty, with Nicholas II as its head of state. Years before, in 1905, a first revolution took place after the Russian defeat against Japan in the Russo-Japanese War. The second cause, Russia was suffering an acute economic crisis with shortages of food, the population suffering from a terrible famine. It was an eminently rural and backward country. The social organization of Russia was based on the most absolute inequality, differentiating two well-defined social classes, the nobility and the common people, almost all peasants. There was practically no middle class. The third cause can be found in the wife of Tsar Nicholas II. Empress Alexandra of German origin was tremendously unpopular and enemy of any reform favorable to the people. A year earlier, they had murdered Rasputin, doctor and advisor to the Empress. These causes, together with a very hard winter, triggered the revolution. We're going to differentiate two phases within the revolution in the year 1917, the February Revolution and the October Revolution, which actually took place in March and November, since Russia was governed by the Julian calendar instead of the Gregorian calendar like the rest of the world. The February Revolution began with a spontaneous strike by workers in the factories of the capital, Petrograd, today St. Petersburg. The following days witnessed strikes and demonstrations throughout Petrograd, and the tension worsened, the demonstrations became increasingly larger. The army didn't have the means to suppress the revolution and Nicholas II, the last emperor of Russia, had to abdicate. The first episode of the revolution resulted in over a hundred victims, mainly demonstrators. The rapid and unexpected fall of the regime gave rise to a wave of enthusiasm and a feeling of liberation in the country. A provisional government quickly succeeded to absolute power. This government would end up being headed by Alexander Kerensky. These first weeks full of hope and generosity were very peaceful, both in the cities and in the rural areas. There were no reprisals against the former servants of the Tsar. Freedom of the press and meetings were decreed, and political exiles were allowed back in, among them the revolutionary Vladimir Lenin who lived in exile. Things began to move. The Soviets, who were popular assemblies of workers, soldiers and peasants, initially allowed the provisional government to govern, but insisted on a prerogative to influence the government and control various militias. The mass of workers and peasants was politicized. The small Bolshevik party led by Lenin, that imposed a strategic radicalization, became spokesman for the growing general discontent and became the repository of popular aspirations. With his great skills of oratory, he began to defend the postulates of Karl Marx to replace capitalism with a new socio-economic socialist system and establish the dictatorship of the proletariat. A frenzy to talk and put forward ideas became established in society. The government of Kerensky was increasingly unpopular. Unable to make reforms, he distanced himself from the population. They continued sending troops to fight in the First World War. This triggered popular revolts. The provisional government opted for repression and began to persecute the opponents. Lenin and Leon Trotsky planned the overthrow of the provisional government to install the communist system. If the February Revolution was a spontaneous uprising, in the October Revolution one could speak of a strategic coup organized by Trotsky and Lenin against the provisional government. In the October Revolution in Petrograd, the Soviets seized the strategic points of the capital and assaulted the Winter Palace by overthrowing the provisional government. Lenin announced three measures. An immediate peace, a decree on land to distribute it among the peasants, and the formation of the Soviet of People's Commissaries, or Sovnarkom, that would organize elections to elect a constituent assembly. Lenin's Bolshevik party was defeated in the elections, 
Lenin ordered the dissolution of the assembly, democratically elected as a minority. This would lead to a civil war. The Bolsheviks created the Cheka, an organization of political and military intelligence to crush any kind of dissent. Their methods of repression weren't limited to mass arrests and executions, but also used brutal methods of torture. The first concentration camps appeared. The Red Terror had begun. In 1918, the former Russian Tsar Nicholas II, the Tsarina Alexandra and her five children, who were held in a mansion in the Ural Mountains, were massacred by a group of revolutionaries. The civil war that confronted the Red Army of Trotsky against the White Army resulted in the victory of the Red Army. Leninism and the dictatorship of the proletariat had been established. The Union of Soviet Socialist Republics was formed in 1922. The country was deeply affected. A terrible famine killed over 5 million people. A series of reforms were launched. The party is run vertically, from top to bottom. The new state consists of a pyramid of Soviets where the party de facto decides and the Soviets vote what the party has said. In 1922, a Sikh Lenin leaves his post. A dispute arises over the succession between Trotsky, the creator of the Red Army, and the most brilliant head of the party and other ringleaders. In 1924, Lenin dies. Joseph Stalin, a man who had been undervalued, prevailed against all odds and would be Lenin's successor. Trotsky was expelled from the party and finally assassinated. Stalin imposed a totalitarian and bloody government and elevated the Soviet Union to the status of a great political, economic, scientific and military power in the world. The Union of Soviet Socialist Republics would last until 1991.